100 years of the culture war. Uh, today's battles over identity and values have deep roots. And he does his um, excellent Frank Ferretti analysis here, but I just wanted to read two, two partial paragraphs here from early in this long essay, which he calls Creating a New Man. Towards the end of the 19th century, political movements, modernizing capitalists, and assorted intellectuals came to believe that a rapidly changing world required changes to the ways in which young people were socialized. As they saw it, a new world needed new men. And to become truly modern, young people had to be distanced from the traditions and values of the past. Old-fashioned moral norms had to be displaced by scientifically authorized values. One reason why this process did not acquire an explicit ideological form was it because it was promoted through the apparently neutral language of science. And maybe that, you know, the entire essay is well worth reading as I imagine the book is as well. But this uh, apparently neutral language of science, he is pointing to in, you know, just beginning of the Industrial Revolution as effectively being grabbed and weaponized then in order to uh, make change in people's attitudes and indeed in the way that they were raising their children uh, by basically pretending that this isn't ideology because we know what ideology looks like. It has, it has names, institutions, and science is different. And you know, the scientific process is the way that we can exclude bias, that we can minimize bias from our understanding of the world. But what exactly what we've been talking about here is when you have manufactured consensus and the, you know, the people wearing lab coats speaking as if for all science with results that they have generated behind closed doors where you are not allowed to see the analysis, that's not science, but that is it is potentially a tool of anyone who wants to um, create consensus and be an ideologue. Right. And, you know, what does it say? So some thing, let's call it the blue team for the moment, mm -hmm. wants to claim the mantle of science, right? It wants to say, look, the enlightened people are telling you what we need to do because they've carefully considered the puzzle, right? right. The enlightened people. The enlightened people have now taken the category of misinformation and smuggled in facts that are just not discussable because they they are claimed to violate the public health narrative which has been simplified for the little people i guess right but at the same time right you cannot listen to anybody who says well there are certain things that might be factual that are going to be declared medical misinformation for your own safety mm -hmm. right if that entity does not look at the claim that men and women do not differ in strength and say, wait a minute, that's just wrong. You can't call that hate speech. That's just a fact. You can't, you, you can't declare a fact hate speech. If it doesn't counter that, then the point is, why is anybody trusted? Right. Right. If it can't spot the obvious garbage, right, if it's going to declare the world flat tomorrow, Mm -hmm. Then the point is, oh, actually, I get that it looks like the scientific authority. I get that it wants you to think it is, but it's not behaving like that. Guess what else they're claiming? Yeah, it's, right. it's behaving like like it's been captured by something that isn't all that interested in the truth or your health and well-being or facts or protecting the people who really deserve to be protected or any of those things. And I mean, I, I think it's it's chilling and terrifying for people who are otherwise able to see this sort of inconsistency precisely because, because science is taught so badly by and large at the K through 12 level and in numeracy and there's no word comparable in science, like unscience, what would, what would the word be? I don't know. So let me just, in, let me, let me use innumeracy as a stand in for both a lack of ability, a lack of comfort and ability to do math and to think scientifically, even though it's really not what innumeracy usually means. Let me use that as a stand in here. Innumeracy is almost celebrated in elite high culture circles. Illiteracy is of course not. No one, no one would survive a cocktail party among coastal elites by claiming that they're actually kind of functionally illiterate, ha, 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 but of course it doesn't matter, does it? Whereas those sorts of claims, I don't 
I never did. I was never very interested. But um, you know, the, to the degree that I'm familiar with what kinds of conversations happen at such at such places and in academia in general, even in academia and you know faculty meetings that just have you know a wide swath of faculty, it is acceptable to say such a thing where you simply replace the word illiteracy with innumeracy. It is understood that most people are not just functionally enumerate, wherein here I'm including the, the lack of understanding of what the scientific process is, but that it's kind of a badge of honor. So put that aside for the moment and say, okay, in, in that world in which you certainly can't claim to be illiterate, but it's kind of amusing, a little bit funny, and almost even... Um, almost even honorable to be a bit enumerate because it means that you weren't that kind of person in it, school. It, it's considered endearing. It's endearing, yes. Now now we have a moment when authorities are not making claims about racism, which everyone, no matter, you know, no matter what you were schooled in, if you are smart and have your eyes open, can see that the new claims of racism are nothing like what racism used to look like, and this is clearly batshit crazy. But now we have the new authorities making claims that sound scientific. And they've got the degrees and they've got the garb and they don't, they are not presenting data and they're not presenting analysis. But the vast majority of people, the talking heads, the, 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 the elites who are creating the media that everyone is listening to, know that they wouldn't be able to assess the data or the analysis, even if it were present. And so as a result, they largely haven't noticed that it's missing. Yeah, They haven't noticed that it's missing. And so when we say to people, look, here's what, here's what we are seeing in the actual literature, and here's how we can't compare it to the claims being made in public policy, because they never share their data or analysis. They won't show it to us, and that's not how science works. That, that sentence almost doesn't even register. It doesn't land. Right. It doesn't land. The, the assum so it's a little bit like... Um, there's this assumption that harms that haven't been demonstrated do not exist rather than you've just intervened in a complex system. There will be harms. You don't know what they are yet, but you should be cautious, right? So it's the right. inversion of the precautionary principle. In the same way, there is this assumption that that which I cannot evaluate is probably done right. Right. Which is, a, if you've looked into these things, it's a preposterous assumption. It's hard to get these things perfectly right, mm -hmm. right? To get them basically right is what is what people should be shooting for. But the number of times that you go in there looking for it to have been done basically right, and either there's a giant black box that you can't evaluate or the claim that's in the abstract is not actually justified by the work that was done, any of these things. Or there was never a hypothesis, and therefore it's data mining, right. and it or went the, backwards. The one you can't see in which the hypothesis is claimed to have preceded the work when in fact it is the result of the observations done during the work that was not hypothetical in yes. the first place. Therefore, there wasn't a test of the hypothesis and what you have here is an observation that is still in want of a test. Right. Which is basically a way of cheating the career system, mm -hmm. right? You, yes. you claim to have tested a hypothesis that still needs a test, but you misinform everybody who then reads your paper and thinks that the hypothesis came first. All of these things are standard, very, very common. And the problem is the assumption that they aren't there because you can't evaluate whether they are is just simply illogical. Yeah. And uh, I think liberals more likely than conservatives because liberals have been eager to adopt the mantle of science and to become secular and to say, yes, I'm not religious. I'm beyond that. So what, you know, where, wherein do I find my meaning and how do I, how do I assess reality in the world? Well, it's through science. That doesn't mean that all of those people who are claiming the mantle of science actually, you know, have a capability to think through what a scientific assessment or what scientific evidence would look like. And, and, and most of them would, would say that. But we have, we have a situation wherein one ideology has replaced another. And this, you know, frankly, this is part of what, uh, and we, we talk about this in the book too, this is part of what Hayek back in the early 20th century was objecting to with his, with his coining of the term scientism, where, you know, he was saying basically, you know, the, the modes of science are being used in places where they don't belong. And we have actually sort of, you know, expanded that term a little bit in the, in the book when we talk about it 
and said, you know, but also, also there's a whole lot of talk as if things are science, where science very much belongs, but science actually isn't what is being done. And yeah, that probably warrants, you know, that second thing probably warrants a different term, but they're both, they're both inappropriate and they're both deranging us. Yes, they're deranging us. And there's so much at stake that it, it you know, one has to be on their guard. Yeah. Right. There's going to be garbage in here because there's so much at stake. And so the question is, well, where is it and who is it fooling? 